Hi, I'm Eric Dowsett and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking with you about uh, Heal the Healer and the importance today of taking care of the self when, particularly when you're working with the health of others. It's wonderful to see today that there are so many modalities available for people who uh, are searching for help with um, various health issues, emotional or psychological issues. Um, and of course with that variety there has also come the um, great numbers of people who are able or developing skills or discovering abilities to help others in many many different ways. It's always uh, been known, I think understood, that the healer needs to heal thyself. Um, in a sense the healer needs to take care of themselves in order to help others. Uh, this isn't so easy to do, it's not something that um, people are necessarily aware of because a part of the problem, as far as I can understand it, is that a lot of the problems that people face are arising from the subconscious. And so what happens, as, as again, as far as I can see, is that a certain subconscious conditioning exists, uh, whether that's the result of um, genetics, from ancestors, whether it's the result of childhood, whether it's the result of certain experiences that we've had or even possibility of past lives coming in affecting the energy of this particular experience. All sorts of things combine to create a very unique personality and so we develop our own personal history if you like and it's that personal history that tends to dictate how we respond or react to, to situations, to others, to emotions, to experiences that we encounter on, on a daily basis. Much of that conditioning is subconscious, so we're not aware that it's actually there, and it drives us. Uh, and of course, while we remain driven by that subconscious conditioning, we remain victims to our past. And so we would find, I think, um, especially when you first go into the field of healing others, that you'll attract people who have very similar issues to yourself. Of course, then what that means is that you know, if you don't actually work on those issues yourself, bring them into the light of day and, um, and move through them, then you get stuck. You're going to be working with those same people for a long, long time. But as you do uh, grow and change, then, of course, you're... Uh, the people that you attract changes as well, like the field grows and expands and people then show up with other issues that may be your own issues. And of course we've all got issues, whilst we have a subconscious uh, driving us we've all got issues whether we're aware of them or not. Other people tend to show us where those issues are, uh, but uh, if we're still into blame and judgment of course then we're going to blame the other person for the discomfort that we might feel in their company. But when we can start to see that it's our own system that's responding or reacting to an external transmission that's coming from the other person, then of course the, the only person that we do have any control over is ourselves. We can't be changing the world until we've changed ourselves. We can't be healing the world until we've healed ourselves. So many people who are on a journey of healing others are actually on a personal journey of healing the self. If that journey involves an energetic exchange between patient and client, which I believe it does, and if that energy that is exchanged is not processed correctly, if it's still judged, if it's still denied, if it's still identified or personalized with, then it's going to create ongoing problems. If we just imagine for a moment that uh, your client is suffering from a stress-related migraines and you start working with that person, if you have a similar personal history, then you're going to start to take on some of those symptoms. And it won't be long before you'll find yourself getting some migraine as well. Your stress may manifest in a slightly different way. It may not be migraines. It could be something else. 
But if you don't process that information effectively, then you're going to take on some of that information and this will continue until you get overloaded. So what's likely to happen there is that, um, for example, and this is not a healing situation, not working with another person at least anyway, um, coming home from a day at work, coming home from the supermarket, coming home from a day exploring, uh, you might feel more tired than the actual experience warrants. Certainly coming home from some of the supermarkets, you would have brought home a lot more than your shopping. And then of course what you need to do is to rest and relax, you need to have a little sleep perhaps, and it's in that sleep time that the body will process the information so that you can move forward into another experience without carrying the past with you. However, a lot of people are far too busy to just stop and you know take a rest now and again to let that process complete. And so then what happens, and this is a particularly true of people working with others who find themselves very busy, that the charge accumulates in the body. So instead of being processed at the time we pick it up, it accumulates. And the longer we go without releasing that charge, the more likely we are to create health issues, physical, emotional, psychological, in ourselves. And of course then the healer becomes less effective because they're spending a lot of time not feeling so good themselves. Rather than wait until the symptoms manifest, and then of course it's a little late because then you've got to do something about it, it's far more beneficial to both the healer and, and their clients if the healer can keep releasing the charge before it accumulates to the point of causing stress in their own body. Now I've developed through a process that's very similar to the Buddhist practice of Tong Leng, which is where the practitioner will take on the pain and suffering of those around them and transmute it through the compassionate heart, a process whereby I can, or any of those people that I've worked with in training, take on a lot of the stress, the emotional stress particularly, physical stress, of other people and change it, transmute it. Now, if we can practice this and develop it with the healer before symptoms manifest, then of course those symptoms aren't going to manifest, keeping the healer much more clear and balanced and better able to work with the people who come to see them. This is a practice that can easily be done, it doesn't take much time, it's not particularly expensive, and you can do it from the comfort of your own home. All you need is a computer connection and Skype. Uh, there's a lot more information about this online on my website. Worth checking out if you think that this could be of value to you. Uh, it's a lot easier, of course, to, to just sort of sit down at a time of your own choosing and work through a process that lasts once we get established no more than 20 minutes at any one session to keep the energy moving, to keep your system free and balanced and at peace. Because if we can do that, not only are you helping your clients because you're not taking time out sick, you're not overloaded, but we're helping you as well because it's helping to keep you in a clear and balanced state. Take a look at the website. This could be something that will really, really help you. And until next time, thanks for listening and take care.